Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, December 23rd, 2013. Now, Santa is not going to be very happy with members of the Obama administration, especially Susan Rice. She's being a very naughty girl. Kurt Nemo reports the Obama administration is offering flimsy excuses for NSA surveillance. On Sunday, National Security Advisor Susan Rice told Leslie Stahl in 60 Minutes that the NSA did not lie to the American people. No, the agency, quote, inadvertently made false representations. <laughs> that's, that's a lie by anybody else's definition. It's also perjury before Congress. But it's kind of like saying we didn't rob the bank. Uh, oh, yes, we did rob the bank. So let us have a pass on it. It's not just the lie. It's actually what they did. They actually broke the law they, and then lied about it to people. But this is what she had to say on 60 Minutes. It's been worth what we've done to protect the United States. And the fact that we have not had a successful attack on our homeland since 9-11 should not be diminished. But that does not mean that everything we're doing as of the present ought to be done the same way in the future. Well, to argue that they saved us from a terrorist attack because a terrorist attack didn't happen, it could be because there wasn't any threat. There wasn't any terrorist threat. That's what internal TSA documents that leaked in a lawsuit, as we've covered before, reveal, that there was no threat. But listen to what she said. She said the NSA has discovered it and corrected it. No, we knew about this 10 years ago. We knew about it from whistleblowers Benny and Drake and many others who came out. This is not anything new. Look at this next article. White House tries to prevent ruling on NSA surveillance. Now, this is telling us from CNET News that the Obama administration has filed papers to prevent a federal judge from issuing a ruling on whether the government's warrantless surveillance programs are constitutional. The White House acknowledged for the first time that the NSA's bulk data collection on America's internet and phone activity was authorized by President Bush in the weeks after the terrorist attacks on September 11th, 2001. That's exactly what the NSA whistleblowers told us. They told us that this has been going on since September 11th, actually before September 11th. That was when they started complaining about it in earnest. And yet now Susan Rice goes on 60 Minutes and says, well, we didn't know about it and we subsequently corrected it. They're piling lies on top of lies. President Bush issued these authorizations approximately every 30 to 60 days, said Clapper. He's telling the truth about that, we finally know. He's finally getting around to telling the truth. Well, today the president signed up for Obamacare himself. I guess maybe that much of the website is working. Barack Obama will today enroll in the quote-unquote Affordable Health Care Act just hours before the new insurance deadline. According to CNN, who has released a new fresh survey, a record high number of Americans hate it. This has gone up now to 62% of voters who say they now oppose Obamacare, which is up four points from just last month. An additional 63% say they believe the new law will increase the amount of money they personally pay for medical care. Many know this by now. This may not be a good sign for the law known as the Affordable Health Care Act, notes CNN. Well, of course it's not affordable. They always give them names that are exactly the opposite of what they really are. And the administration is now extending the deadline for yet another 24 hours, right up to the time that Santa Claus comes through. You can get your new affordable health care. If you believe in Santa Claus, you probably believe in the new Affordable Health Care Act. The extension, said sources, cannot be overridden by insurance companies. The only the dictator Obama can override these extensions, and he's been just modifying the law at will lately. It's the latest of several last-minute ad hoc rule changes issued by the administration, in other words, dictates, including last week's announcement that individuals whose insurance plans were canceled may receive an exemption from the Affordable Care Act's individual mandate. What do you, how do you know where you are in this law? It's changed so many times. It was confusing to start with. It was multi-thousand page legislation, and now he's gone in and changed it continuously. But what does the future of health care look like? Well, it looks like a cheesy kiosk at Walmart. Jakari Jackson has more information on that. Tell me about this Walmart kiosk. Well, David, it made me think about the red box. You know, we gave up Blockbuster to get red box, and most people are okay with that. But do you really want to give up your doctor for an Obamacare kiosk? It's just yeah. like that movie Elysium. You, you saw the movie. Right. The guy goes there and he says, I'm having this problem, I'm having that problem. Some pills shoot out, and there you go. Have a nice day. You know, that, that's pretty much 
what's going on with these new kiosks. They can take your blood pressure, they can take your weight and so forth. But it's telling me that, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm obese, but it's telling me that I'm <laughs> no, <you're not>. overweight <laughs> and I need to seek medical attention. And the kicker about it that people will see in our new video is we actually tried to request a doctor on the Obamacare kiosk and we can only find that there were no doctors in three different zip codes. Wow. It's like a bad joke. It's like a bluff, actually. It's mm -hmm. what, it, it is just a like the rest of Obamacare. It's a, it's a bad joke and a bluff. It's incompetent. They can't pull anything together. But they really aren't trying either. I mean, it, when you're talking no, about getting no. your health care from a kiosk at Walmart, they don't have much in mind for you, even if they get it to work properly. Exactly. That's what the health care is essentially going to be, whether you go to a kiosk or if you go to your doctor with this Obamacare, it's going to be the equivalent of this. Yes. Oh, OK. You're X height or X weight. You're overweight or you have depression or you, you know, have bad health, whatever the situation may be. That's what it's going to be under this current health care system. That's amazing. Well, thanks for joining us, Jakari. We'll see that report at the end of tonight's broadcast. Thank you. Well, it's been less than three years, and we already see sailors who are helping out with the rescue efforts at Fukushima coming down with cancer. In a story from Zero Hedge, U.S. sailors are assisting with Fukushima cleanup and are crippled by cancer. Eight U.S. soldiers have filed damages suit against Tokyo Electric Power Company, claiming they were exposed to radiation and face health threats as the utility did not provide appropriate information. Now, just months after they were exposed to this, one of the soldiers said he began to notice strange lumps all over his body. Testing revealed he'd been poisoned with radiation and his illness would get worse. His fiance, who was also on board ship, began to notice frightening symptoms, including chronic bronchitis and hemorrhaging. They and 49 other U.S. Navy members who served aboard the Reagan and sister ship USS Essex now trace illnesses, including thyroid and testicular cancers, leukemia, and brain tumors. Now, they were not the only ones lied to. The entire Japanese, American public were lied to and are being lied to. This is a very serious incident. The fact that people are dying of cancer just three years afterwards, we know we're going to see elevated cancer levels, but of course they will pretend that there's no connection to it once we do see those elevated levels. Now in police state news, we see that a new armored tank for the town of Salinas, California is causing a war of words. Critics took the police department's Facebook page and asked exactly why a city of only 150,000 people on the California coast really needs a vehicle designed for battlefield use. They said things like, that vehicle is made for war. Do not use my safety to justify that vehicle. Perfect. The Salinas Police Department is just a bunch of cowards that want to use that vehicle as intimidation to terrorize the citizens of this city. Another wrote, stop gang members? Gang members don't riot in mass numbers. It's right in front of our faces. Why don't we see it? Why would the Army give something like that for free? Let's think about it for once, folks. They are equipping and training for military scenarios. That is exactly why we asked the police chief down in San Antonio if he would confiscate arms from citizens if ordered to do so. And he said, well, that's a hypothetical situation. This is a hypothetical situation that they train for. And that's when they have this kind of equipment, that's what they're going to use it for. And something else to be concerned about is the war of robots. Even more concerning than robotic police who are going to follow orders are these robots. And we had the robot competition from DARPA just conclude last week. And the winner is Shaft. That's right. He's a bad mother. These are Japanese scientists who had to actually sever all ties to the Japanese government as well as to any university funding in order to work on this. Why? Because it is a piece of war machine. They understand exactly what it is. Of course, we're being told that this is something that is being done for your safety. It's going to rescue humans in a disaster. Does that look like something's going to rescue you? But actually, you know, what could really go wrong, after all, with a robot like that? You have 20 seconds to comply. You now have 15 seconds to comply. You are in direct violation Well, it's just software, right? Well, Leanne McAdoo is going to have a report on the consequences of hacking your iPhone right after the break. Stay tuned.
facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield formulation, fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. And the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. InfoWarsStore.com. Welcome back. Now, a lot of people will try to hack their iPhone operating system to escape the limitations. They call that jailbreaking. But if you do that, what are the consequences for surveillance from the NSA? Leanne McAdoo has that report. Well, the latest version of jailbreak has been released just in time for Christmas. So now you can download all of those non-Apple sanctioned apps. Jailbreak supposedly works with any iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad Mini that's running iOS 7, and it'll allow you to break through Apple's proprietary use barriers and run unauthorized software to your device. But while you may be able to jailbreak your way through those constraints, just remember that your phone is still spying on all of your forbidden fixes. As much as we would like to believe that our passwords keep us safe from the prying eyes of government officials and snooping hackers, this is just not the case. And after jailbreaking your phone, installing spyware is an even easier next step. Most spyware is difficult to track, and the majority of users will never even know it's been installed. And government-owned spyware is perfect for iPhones. The tech industry has begun selling special software to governments that can do everything from follow your movements to recognizing your voice. One example of this type of software is the Finn Fisher program, which is produced by the Gamma International and delivered via a phony iTunes update. Of course, software developers claim this is to aid high-level law enforcement to track terrorists, but the software has already been used to target political activists during the Arab Spring uprising. Teams of NSA employees stationed around the globe are dedicated to tracking phones in real time, and the NSA has promised to build a database of every call ever made, so you can bet it's going to be phone calls of ordinary citizens, not just terrorists, that are being nefariously collected. And with each new upgrade, the spying capabilities of the NSA upgrade as well. The new iPhone 5 is supposedly the best new high-tech phone out there, but the built-in battery system makes it even easier for the FBI to activate the microphone on the device and record everything that is happening in the room, even when your phone has been switched off. The NSA can access any smartphone from any leading manufacturer, regardless of how safe they claim their operating system is. Trojan horse programs disguised behind routine system updates are the likely method through which the NSA gains direct access to millions of American cell phones and other devices. As we have also previously highlighted, terms of agreement for many of the apps that you download to your smartphone now use your microphone to listen to you, and your camera takes pictures of you without your knowledge. One of the biggest lies told on the internet is, 
I've read the terms of agreement. So you might not have even noticed that these apps are requiring you to accept that your cell phone has become a literal NSA tracking device. App companies require you to allow them to approximate your location, send text messages from your phone that'll cost you money, read your contacts, get full network access to your communications, which in other words means listen to your phone calls. They can modify or delete the contents of your USB storage and even disable the four digit code that password protects your phone. Since the vast majority of people simply consent to terms of agreement without bothering to read them, this means that potentially millions of smartphone users all over the world have given app companies and by extension service providers permission to record their conversations and take pictures of their private life. And all of that is of course being turned over to the NSA to store and collect. So remember, while you might be using tools to fight the system, the system can still see and hear everything that you're up to. Well, right after the break, Leanne McAdoo is going to have an interview with a nurse who refused to get a mandatory flu shot, not taking the religious exemption, but taking the high road of fighting it with scientific research. Stay tuned and find out what happened right after the break. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% Made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit madein1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Brianna Breton is a 29-year-old pregnant nurse from Pennsylvania who, after reading the package insert on a flu vaccine, she decided to dig a little bit deeper. And what she found gave her cause for concern for the health of her unborn child. Well, when she presented this evidence to her employer at the hospital for a reason to opt out of the flu vaccine, they decided to fire her instead. Driana joins us with her son, Weston, <laughs> hiding there behind her. <laughs> So, Driana, if you just if you wouldn't mind just briefly telling the viewers about what happened. I found out I was pregnant the end of October. Um, I had miscarried twice before this, and immediately upon finding out I was pregnant, I went to my employer, um, human resource representative, and told her I would need help. Hey, buddy, told her I would need help in in getting an exemption for the flu vaccine. Um, I, they had started a mandatory policy that all employees, all healthcare employees receive a, a the flu vaccine. Um, and I knew that there were the reasons for exemption, so I asked her to assist me in getting an exemption form and was immediately told that if I did not receive the flu vaccine, I would be it would be considered my resignation. 
And so had you, have you taken the flu vaccine before for work? Was this a policy that was just implemented this year? It has been a policy of the hospital for the past two years. Mm -hmm. uh, the mandatory policy has been in effect. It was heavily encouraged before that. But I, I have never been in a department that it's been mandated for. So this is the first year it's been mandatory for me. So did you think that it was going to be this big of an issue when you refused to take the vaccine? Honestly, no. I had done my research on the flu vaccine. And while I agree that there's good purpose for the flu vaccine, the label itself says that it's not studied in pregnant women or in nursing mothers. Um, in my first year as a nurse, I took care of a patient who received, who obtained Guillain-Barre syndrome after getting the flu vaccine, which is a known side effect, um, albeit rare, it's, it's a known side effect of the flu vaccine. So in my, in my train of thought, if that can happen to a grown human being, what could it do to a growing fetus? And I am a healthy individual and take good care of myself and um, thought it was more important to me Sorry. It was more important for me to avoid the flu vaccine than to avoid the flu. And um, it's important to protect my patients as well. That's very important to me. And I offered to wear a, a mask during the whole flu season, um, which would protect my patients very adequately against the flu and not only the flu, but other viruses as well. And so how did you feel knowing that there was an exemption in place? There were other people at the hospital who were allowed to wear the masks if they were allergic to anything that was in the flu shot or if they had a religious reason for not wanting to take the shot. How did you feel when they said that your concerns over your unborn child weren't valid? That was very frustrating to me. And I had many people come to me and say, why don't you just say it's for religious reasons that you don't want the flu vaccine? And my response was because that's not true. It is not a part of my religious belief or a part of my denomination that we don't receive the flu vaccine. Um, I'm not against other people getting the flu vaccine, but this was important to me. This is what I felt was, was important to protect my baby, to protect myself. Um, there are a lot of unknowns. And when I asked my doctor, what does this do to the baby? There are ingredients in the in the flu vaccine, such as formaldehyde and, and mercury. What does that do to the growing baby? I wasn't given an answer because the studies aren't done. So it was very frustrating to me that I felt like, and I had looked at several studies and had scientific research that I presented to the hospital saying, here's my reasoning for for abstaining from the flu vaccine, yet somebody can come and say, I just don't believe that I should give, you know, inject those things into my body, and that's okay. It, that, that was frustrating to me. That was very frustrating to me. Right, that's what's, I mean, you're, you're bringing them actual scientific proof, and you've had firsthand experience with someone who had an adverse reaction to the flu shot, so you're coming from a very you know, scientific point of view, which makes a lot of sense. It is quite frustrating. Do you think that they were trying to make an example out of you or, you know, Perhaps. prove something? Perhaps. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know if other people were fired. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that there were. That hasn't come to my attention. But um, I do. Um, that was very frustrating to me. And, and I do understand their position in wanting to tell the public that they are doing everything they can to protect the flu, but I felt like I offered a win-win situation in offering to wear the mask for all patient contact, which would, which would you know, do exactly what the flu vaccine would do and more. Um, so now, obviously, it's the holidays, and they went ahead with their, their threat to sort of terminate you if you didn't go ahead and get the flu shot. Is it something that you would reconsider now? Would you get the flu shot at this point? No. Uh, I, I knew this, the stakes were high when we made the decision to do this, and we made the decision as a family. We really believe we're doing the right thing and have faith that the right thing will happen for us. Um, I don't know what that is, and it's kind of a scary place to be in right now, not having a job. And we depend on, on my income, and we have a mortgage, and it is Christmas time. And it's also the challenge of going out now into the workforce, um, you know, asking people to hire me and knowing that, you know, I'm going to be leaving on maternity leave in a few months. So that, that presents a challenge as well, but I wouldn't 
do anything differently. I stand by my decision and believe firmly that I did the right thing. And what were some of the, what did some of your patients say or, or maybe some other fellow nurses? I did not bring this up with any patients at all. So as far as I know, they don't know about it unless they've heard about it through somebody else. Um, the nurses that I work with were all in support of me. I had so much support. I was very overwhelmed by the support. And I had a lot of people stand beside me and, and, um, and went to the superiors and said, we disagree with this decision. And so that was all very, um, very touching at least. And to know that people were in agreement with me and understood where I was coming from. And have there been any other nurses that you are aware of that have refused to take this flu shot for the same reasons or? No, not that I am aware of. I'm, I'm not. I've spoken with many nurses who have said, you know, I never wanted to get the flu vaccine. It's not something I've ever done before, but because it's a, a mandatory policy now, I was in fear for my job and I chose to get the vaccine. I've heard a lot of people say that, but ultimately the fear of losing their job is you know, a greater fear than, than taking the flu vaccine. Right, that seems to be the thing that you should be more concerned with your job than your unborn child. And, and yeah, it might be rare to have an adverse reaction, but I would just hate for it to be my child to be that one in a million chance. I think as a mother, that's, you know, the most important thing you can do is be concerned. That's Absolutely. I mean, then we're the, the minute you find out you're pregnant, you're doing everything you can to take good care of your body. And I'm very conscientious of what I'm exposed to and what I eat. And this to me isn't any different. I'm just making the best decisions I can make in the moment. Exactly. Well, is there anything that you want to say to anyone out there that might be in the same position as you, that it might be something that's mandatory for them or someone who is who is concerned about taking the flu vaccine? Stand your ground. If it's something you, you feel strongly about, stand your ground because this is a big battle to fight and people are scared of it, but it's not going to be fought if no one chooses to fight it. It's never going to be won if no one chooses to fight it. So um, I would just say, you know, just stand up for what you believe in and what you feel is right. And that's the only way that we can get our voices out there and possibly make a difference. Exactly. We've got to reclaim the right to <laughs> do what we want to do with our with our bodies and, and take control of our own health. Right. Not give that to someone else. Well, Driana, thank you so much for sharing your story. My and pleasure. My you pleasure. guys have a great holiday. Thank you. You do the same. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, that is just an incredible story. I can't believe Driana, she could have lied. She could have said, you know, I, I file a religious exemption or I'm allergic to this shot. But instead, she educated herself. She read the package insert and she brought all of that information to her employers, brought them facts to say, hey, I'd like to protect my unborn child. That's my number one concern. And rather than lie and keep her job, she decided to tell the truth and she was punished for it. And it's it's crazy. And there are still so many people out there that are in the same profession or in similar professions who are facing the possibility of losing their jobs if they don't follow through with a forced vaccination. So we, we really all need to just rally and stand our ground and support people like Drayana Breton who claim their liberty. We have the rights to, to protect our health and the health of our unborn children. So Thank you all very much for tuning in to tonight's show and then tune in over the holidays because Alex Jones is gonna be in studio sharing some of his favorite interviews from 2013. Now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15 day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at infowars.com slash show. I don't normally go to Walmart, but when I do, it's to get a story. So I got a tip that at Walmart they have RFID scanning Obamacare kiosk. So I'm gonna go inside this Walmart in Buda, Texas to find out if that is the case and also see what the process is to actually sign up for Obamacare. The Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, was passed in 2010. 
and the law makes health insurance available to more people with the hope that they will be able to get the care they need. Please place your left arm into the blood pressure cuff. The blood pressure cuff is starting. The blood pressure cuff will tighten around your arm. Please answer the question. We will now begin your weight and body mass evaluation. Please place your feet on the footrest as shown in this video. So I just finished my healthcare assessment at the Obamacare kiosk. To be very clear, I did not sign up for Obamacare. I went to test out the kiosk. I did use my height and weight and so forth to uh, get the health assessment, but I did not sign up for Obamacare, and I'm not suggesting that you do either. First of all, that thing does have some type of scanner, but I cannot confirm that it's for RFIDs. As far as my healthcare assessment itself, the kiosk and all of its infinite wisdom told me that even though I'm age 27 and I jog three miles a day before I go into work, that I am overweight, possibly even obese. Also that I'm at high risk for hypertension. Now I'll talk about the overweight aspect for a moment and it also had other options. You could check your eyes and other things as well. I didn't want to give the NSA my retina scans, so I opted out of that one. When you go to these machines or I guess any doctor now, they do these type of body mask index, the BMI, and I knew this was bull since I was in high school because back in high school they were trying to tell me that I was obese pretty much as for on paper because I weighed more than I was supposed to even though me and a lot of the other guys who played sports and so on we worked out twice a day you know we you know we're 20 pounds overweight because we walk around with so much muscle we looked like the guys from Gears of War and so keep that in mind when you go to these machines it's going to tell you you're fat or you're whatever and you may have some weight issues or whatnot but take that with a grain of salt and think about you know this stuff is pretty much a one-size-fits-all policy that if you're a certain age a certain height you need to be x weight you know it doesn't take into account you know muscle mass or uh, muscle mass or things such as that so if you're interested in finding one of these Obamacare machines, maybe even shooting your own video, you can go to solohealth.com or .gov or whatever it is, shoot your own video, link it in the comments below, and we'll take a look at it. And once again, I'm not telling you to sign up for Obamacare. I'm just saying if you guys are interested in a joke and a laugh, you can go check out these machines. You can find more reports at infowars.com. The Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, was passed in 2010, and the law makes health insurance available to more people with the hope that they will be able to get the care they need. Please, please enter your data first. What is your gender? Some races have a height. Please choose an answer. Please answer the question. We will now begin your weight and body mass evaluation. Please place your feet on the footrest as shown in this video. Thank you. You have completed the weight test. How many servings of vegetables do you eat? Do you eat packaged food? Do you eat breakfast most mornings? Now we are going to test your distance vision. If you wear glasses for seeing in the distance, please make sure they are on now. Look above this screen. You will notice the distance window. You should see some letters on the screen. Please select one of the following. Please choose an answer. I have no doctors in my zip code. So, yeah. Okay, so no doctors in that zip code either. Hey, Glenn, give me a, a zip code here. 78620. 78620. Fine doctor. No doctors.